Hello and welcome to my channel. So in this video I'm going to do a quick run through of how I edit my astronomy sketches. I wanted to show anybody who's been watching my time lapse videos how I go about making my final image. Um, so I bring it here into GIMP. Um, this is just me taking a picture of it with my cell phone and then I just bring it into GIMP. Um, let's see the image size is 4032 by 3024 uh, pixels. So it's a relatively large image size that I'm working with here. And I like to have the large image uh, image size, so I'll keep it at that. And first thing I do here is I go to colors and I go to invert, which gets me my, makes the stars look white. And you can see I've made my ocular eyepiece view here and I marked off my north and west when I was out there. Um, next thing I'm going to do is go into colors and go into saturation. I think it's saturation. Drop that down till it's about zero and click OK. And that gives me the black and white so it gets rid of some of the color effects that may be in there from when I took my image. Um, next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a new layer. And I'm going to call this layer eyepiece. And now with the eyepiece layer selected, I'm going to select my ellipse tool. Make sure I got feather edges selected. And for my image size, I usually have it around 45 and I'm just going to create my circle. There might be an easier way to do this. So it's a little more centered and I don't have to be as tedious, but I don't really play around with GIMP a whole lot. So I'm just kind of doing what seems like it's gonna work. Um, I do the inner edge of my circle here. That way when I fill in the background, it doesn't include the white edge and it feels a little bit more like an eyepiece. So that right there should be just about good enough. And then you go to select and invert. Um, we want a nice black color here. So zero and all these down left corner, doesn't matter which corner, it's black in either corner. So click okay, select your bucket tool. And then we're just going to fill. And there we go. So now we've got the black background and now we've got our eyepiece view here. Now I'm going to create yet another layer. I'm going to call this one background. And select OK. Take the background layer and move it to the bottom of the layers over here on the right. And I'm going to select right around 12.8 for these for the red, green, blue. Right around there seems like it's okay. And then I'm going to use the bucket tool and I'm going to fill that. So now that's our background. And then I'm going to create one more layer here and I'm going to call this layer stars. And if you haven't guessed, this will be the layer that I'm putting my stars in. Because if you look at this, you'll see that the stars are not exactly round. So all I'm really doing with this is I'm just rounding out the stars, fixing up the background, making a nice eyepiece view, and that's pretty much it. So what I'm going to do is select a brush. Um, brush size for the bigger stars, I'm going to start off, um, 48 might be a little too big. We'll start with like a 44 for the bigger stars. Hardness set at zero. And then just to play around, oh wait, first I wanna make sure I've got a nice, you don't want a bright white 
we want a nice grayish color, light gray. So I'm just going to stick with the color I had there. And then I'm going to go through and mark off some stars, some of the bigger stars with my brush. And as you can see, those stars aren't really visible now, but when I click the little eye on my sketch layer, there they are. And the reason I went with the hardness of zero is because stars aren't just points. There's doesn't just like your stars don't look like that. That it does not make for a good star. You want it to fade out. So I set the hardness to zero. So we go back into here. We got some of our stars marked. Mark more of our bigger stars here. These were the biggest and brightest stars of the cluster. I just want to make sure I get the majority of those. I'll probably have to do some back and forth. And it's nice to do this blinking so that you can see what stars you may have missed. So it looks like we're going to move on to our next size here. Drop this down to like 38 or so and let's get some of the other stars. Now you can see the size differences. It's not too noticeable, but it helps it so that it's not the same star size. It makes it look a little more realistic like what you saw through your eyepiece. There's a lot of small stars in this, so I'm, I'm going to be dropping this down to, let's say, 25 or so. As you can see, some of these aren't as dark or aren't as bright as some of the other stars. And I could go in here and I could change brightness here, but I don't really like doing that. I'll go through and I'll use the dodge and burn tools later to adjust brightness. Okay, got those stars. Let's drop this down because all the rest of the stars are pretty small. Make them about 16 maybe. Okay, now we want some more small stars. 13 is good for really tiny stars. You don't want to get too small with these stars or else they're really not going to look good. 13 is usually about the smallest I, I put in. Some of that is specs, like this little spot is the hole for my compass, so I don't want to draw that in. I think that's all my stars. <clears throat> so I'm just going to zoom out here. There is my eyepiece view. Then there it is with the newly placed stars. As you can see it's a bit time consuming, but it pays to get those rounder stars. So now let's zoom back in. Bust out the, the dodge and burn here. Again, hardness of zero and adjust your, I don't know, I like having a bigger size here. Seems to cover it pretty well. Um, I'll 
burn to darken them. So I notice that these two here are a little darker. So we'll dim those up a bit. You don't want the same dimming for everything. I mean, you, you want it to vary a little bit because, I mean, I'm sure it varied in the eyepiece. Then use Dodge to brighten some stars and brighten some of these bigger ones. Well, that might be about good. I think I'm happy with that. Let's see. Let's zoom out completely here. See the full view. I think that is pretty good. See how there's some nice variety. You got some dim stars. You got some bright stars. You got big stars. You got small stars. Nice variety. That looks a lot like what I had in my sketch. I think I did a pretty good job representing that. Now, since I got the sketch all done, that's pretty much the end. And the final thing will look like that, or final sketch will look like that. We could probably change this background color if you want that to be a little bit darker, but I got light polluted skies, so I'm going to keep it where it's at. Just like that. Something else I forgot to do real quick here is let's go and I like to make it a nice red color. I'm going to mark off the north and west. Probably want this a large, let's go with about 142 or so. Let's put an N, move it. Oops, don't want to move the whole drawing, just want to move the N. Put it right about there. Then let's make ourselves a nice little W for West. And again, we'll move that. Right about there to the edge. Fill that in, and there we go. Now we got our North and West marked off. And you, from there, you can extrapolate East is over here and South is there. And then the very last thing I do is I go in, I put in all my information. So going to do this. I like to go with a nice grayish white color again for my writing. Kind of matches the stars I made. Let's click OK. Let's drop this down to about 88 or so. I think 88 is about a, good, a pretty good size. We want left oriented so M35 Plattsburgh New York Let's see this was done on December 28th 2019 then underneath that I put the time it was 21 21 to 2147 Eastern Standard Time. That's the information I put in my upper left box. Down here, we've got eight inch SCT and 6.3 6 focal reducer. Um, 8 to 24 Vixen zoom eyepiece at 24 millimeters and magnification is roughly 53x. So 
I just like to include my telescope and that information telescope and magnification that kind of stuff in this corner then in the upper right I'm going to write a line and let's see we had temperature wise during this drawing was about 29 degrees Fahrenheit 29 Fahrenheit uh, it was clear uh, Bortle six skies so I live in an orange zone um, seeing was about a three out of five transparency was also about a three out of five and I was dealing with a four percent waxing crescent moon that night and that's all I put up in that corner just align it like so and then down here I just include my name and my blog so. like that and again we just align And there you go. That's the final image of this sketch. So I hope you enjoyed and I hope this was useful for you with your sketches and I will hopefully get some videos done later on. Um, I might try to do the one that I did of M42 so that that'll be up soon. Um, I also want to do a globular cluster video just kind of give you an idea. Open clusters are relatively easy there's a lot more. It gets more in depth with uh, nebula and open cl or uh, globular clusters. So I hope you enjoyed and keep an eye out for more tutorial videos on how to edit your uh, sketches in GIMP. And the same idea and methods can be used in Photoshop. I just don't have Photoshop anymore, so I use GIMP. So hope you enjoyed and I hope this was helpful to you and I'd love to see your sketches. So please let me know how, how it works out for you. Thanks for watching.